Accountability and femininity do not mix. Accountability is not a feminine trait, it is a masculine trait. And that's why women seem to struggle so much being accountable for their actions. Oh, so outrageous, so sexist. What are you saying, Alexander? I get, I get that. Calm down, let me explain. On one of my recent Patreon videos, the community got into this really spirited discussion about the nature of accountability, its origins, its purpose, and the degree to which men and women have it. And we talked about all these different examples of women failing to show accountability and why that might be. It's not for the purpose of hating women or denigrating femininity. It's for the purpose of actually trying to understand this stuff. That's what you tend to find in my Patreon community is it's not very emotionally volatile. It's filled with high quality individuals who are really genuinely trying to understand this stuff so that they can apply this information to create positive relationships in their own personal lives. We also had great discussions on the topic, is chivalry dead? Which is the latest Patreon video I've released. So if you want to see that one, go check out my Patreon. Short answer, yes, chivalry is dead, but more interesting is the discussion of who killed it. Is it men or women? But back to the discussion on accountability, one of my patrons felt quite passionately that he could actually prove that accountability didn't come naturally to women on a biological basis. And that's what I'm going to explore in this video. So let's first just establish what I hope should be obvious to everybody who's paying attention to the real world, that yes, women have an accountability problem. I'm not saying it's a problem that is exclusive to women, but there are so many instances where men and women are coming into conflict with each other, not understanding the actual source of the tension between the two of them that can actually be drawn back to this lack of accountability. If you don't believe me that this is a real thing, I encourage you to go out onto the street or the next time you're at a party and you're speaking to some women, ask them about their previous relationships. Ask them about their ex-boyfriends. Ask them why they broke up, what went wrong in the relationship, and then keep a tally on the amount of times you actually hear the woman take responsibility for what went wrong. How often would you hear a woman say, I think it was all my fault. I didn't appreciate his masculinity. I was selfish and entitled, and I'm really trying to grow so that I can be a better person for the next man. You almost never hear that. It was, oh, he was a scumbag, or he was controlling, he didn't appreciate me. Or for men who are currently in a relationship with a woman, have you experienced this phenomenon where the two of you are arguing about something that she's done, some misstep, some misjudgment, some problem in her behavior, and instead of actually addressing the problematic behavior itself, she makes it about you and she blames you. Well, of course I did that terrible thing, but I wouldn't have done it if you weren't always doing this. That's that lack of accountability that I'm talking about. Or what about this very well-known phenomenon that women don't want to be accountable for their past behavior, especially if it involves their sexual behavior. Back when we were interviewing women on the streets for this channel, one of the questions that I would ask is, have you ever lied to a partner about your sexual history? And if so, why? And you would get responses that just explode the logic of a man's brain when she would say something like, well, yes, I've lied to my boyfriend, but that's because I know that he'd be upset. I know that that sounds unbelievable. And while it certainly doesn't describe every woman, there is a sizable number of women out there who sincerely believe that they are justified in lying, justified in not taking accountability for their past behavior, because if they were to take accountability, they would be judged. And that's not fair. So let's actually stop and try and understand this. Let's try and understand why accountability does does not come so naturally to women. Okay, let's look at this in evolutionary terms. So I'm just going to oversimplify the language here and talk about an instinct for accountability, or we have a gene for accountability. We have an accountability gene. And then ask yourself this question, in which gender, men or women, is it more important for that gene to strongly assert itself? In what tasks, in what kind of positions is accountability the most important? And the answer is in leadership positions. Throughout history, men have had to trust each other as they're going into extremely dangerous situations. Maybe they're going to war with the neighboring tribe. Maybe they're trying to hunt bears or a mammoth or something. Whatever it is, it requires that each man understands their position, their place, and that they trust and respect their fellow men. In these life and death situations, accountability is of the utmost importance. The stakes are high. You actually depend upon the man next to you being competent, being accountable for his behavior in order to be able to carry out your dangerous task. And so what happens if the task goes really badly? The war is a disaster. The hunting expedition failed. Well, all the men are going to sit around and discuss 
what just happened? How did this go so badly? Because it's a life and death situation, because the stakes are so high, this can't just be a matter of opinion or feelings. You actually need to discover, objectively speaking, in black and white, what went wrong? Who was responsible? Do you see in that situation that it makes sense that the person who's going to rise to the position of leadership is the person who can display the most accountability? This is not to downplay the importance of competence or strength. Naturally, the most talented men, the strongest men, are going to be inclined towards taking on that leadership position. But you might be surprised to find that in hunter-gatherer tribes that still exist on the planet today, and even in our closest like primate relatives, it's not always the strongest, most like aggressive man who finds himself to be the chief. It can be the man with the most wisdom, the best social skills, the capacity to you know, increase and promote harmony within his tribe. In essence, the people that we feel most comfortable elevating to positions of leadership are the people who we deem to be the most trustworthy. And what creates trustworthiness? Accountability. Now, being at the top of a hierarchy is obviously good for a man's survival prospects. And so you can see why evolution would positively select for accountability and reinforce its expression. Evolution notices the men who are accountable tend to be more popular. They tend to rise up the ranks of the leadership hierarchy. They're safer. Okay, great. Let's give men more accountability. I know that this seems at odds with what we see in the modern world where we've got like CEOs and politicians, you know, really corrupt men making terrible decisions, showing no accountability for their crimes. I'm not blind to those realities. I think men who abuse their positions of power are absolute scumbags, but I would caution you against drawing inferences from our modern society as it relates to how men and women would have acted back in the day. The real problem is that the organizations, the countries, the corporations that we've created are just too big for our primitive mind to really be able to comprehend. We only really knew like a couple of hundred people. That's actually the the number of people we're comfortable interacting with. That's what our brains are wired for. But when you've got people in charge of like a Tesla or an Amazon or the United States, it's very difficult for the low level people to actually hold their leaders accountable. There's just too many layers in between. And so it allows corruption and selfishness to grow. So don't think of those situations as evidence that accountability is not a masculine trait. Instead, what I would encourage you is to shrink back the examples that you're thinking of to smaller communities. Think of like a small social group that you're a part of, a friend group, a sports team. You can see that in those smaller groups, the interpersonal relationships play a much bigger role than those large faceless organizations. And if you think of the men who you like, admire, and respect within those organizations, you think of your local gym, your martial arts training center, your sports team, whatever, you think of the men who you really respect there are men of integrity, men who have accountability. That's how those men rise to positions of respect and esteem in the eyes of their fellow men. Their words carry weight because they are accountable for them. If you notice that one of the men in your sports team is always breaking promises, never doing what he says he's going to do, constantly lying, there's no accountability, and so he's going to be demoted in the eyes of other people. And in these smaller settings, when something does go wrong, all the men are going to gather around and actually have a discussion. Okay, what just occurred? Why did this go so badly? You can start to see now why some of the reasoning might be legitimate as to why accountability might specifically be a more masculine trait. But you might say, Alexander, this makes no sense. There are lots of women's groups out there, women's sporting teams, and they're going to be governed by the exact same rules. This doesn't convince me as to why accountability is, is more masculine than feminine. Okay, in the first instance, I would absolutely agree with you. And I would encourage you to remember that when we're talking about something being masculine or feminine, we're not saying it's like a 100 and zero thing as though men have 100% accountability and women have zero. We're often talking like a 55-45 or a 60-40. Men and women are mostly similar, but it's in that 10, 15, 20% of the difference, the weighting, that I find it really fascinating to explore. And so while there may be organizations of women that operate in exactly the same way as the organizations of men, what I want to ask you is this, is have you noticed that when a group of women are trying to act towards a common goal and something does go wrong, sometimes in that all-female setting, their method of trying to understand and fix the problem gives far less reference to the objective facts of reality and far more deference to their emotions and their social connections. If you think of a group of girls in high school, like a friendship group, and two of the friends are fighting because of something that one or the other one said, how likely is it that all of the girls are going to sit around and be like, okay, what exactly was said? And mm, that person is absolutely correct. And we have to have to stick 
to what's true, to what's objectively factu factually accurate. That's not what happens. Often the women just side with who they like the best. The question of what is objectively true is not given nearly as much importance as what is subjectively emotionally true for each individual woman. Of course, this can happen with men as well. Again, understand I'm not talking like some absolute thing, but as a stereotypical generalization, a group of men, when there's a problem, are going to give reference to the facts of the situation when trying to resolve it and move forward. Whereas women are more inclined to look towards social alliances and their emotions. Another way of saying that is that women don't value the importance of accountability in the same way that men do. Again, because of the evolutionary pressures that each gender was subject to, men were in life and death, high stakes situations more often. And so accountability naturally became more important. You can see this play out in the hierarchies that men and women find themselves in today, in that if a man wants to reach like the top spot in one of these small community organizations, he really needs to have a lot of accountability, but it's not the same pressure for a woman, what she really needs to be is well liked. Men are more likely to follow somebody that they don't like but respect than women are. If women don't like the woman, it doesn't really matter how much she respects her, she's not likely to follow her. None of this should be used to make any kind of arguments that women are inferior or men superior. That's completely not the point. We're talking about the evolutionary pressures that each gender was under. And what I'm saying is that men had to develop their accountability more. That was necessary for their survival. Whereas women had to develop other things that men didn't. Women have a more sensitive eye to things like social cohesion, kindness, tact, nurturing than men do. And part of that is sexual selection because men were looking for those traits in women like kindness and nurturing because they knew that that was going to create better mothers. And so in terms of their children surviving, it made sense to look for women who had those personality characteristics. But of course, for women with their own sexual selection pressures, they're looking for men who demonstrate accountability. Ah, I like this man. I know that I'm going to be able to have children with him and my children are going to be safe because he's the kind of man who doesn't lie, who doesn't back down from a challenge, who doesn't manipulate manipulate others. He's accountable. That's trustworthy. That same environmental pressure for accountability was just never exacted on women to the same degree. It was even suggested in that Patreon discussion that I was talking about earlier that one of the reasons why women are more inclined to follow like new age philosophies, things like tarot and astrology is because those systems of belief don't encourage accountability. Oh, who knows why your life is like this? It's all just random. It's all just the universe. It's because of past lives, you know, that kind of philosophy might appeal to a woman who's not really inclined to look towards accountability. But for a man who wants to understand things and get things done and, and owns up to his mistakes, him being told that nothing he does makes any difference, that it's all just part of some divine plan that he has no control over, that's not appealing. That doesn't speak to his instincts of accountability. Now, please understand that I'm not committing any kind of naturalistic fallacy here by saying that you know, accountability was not pushed into femininity by evolution to the same degree that it was pushed into masculinity, as though that means that women have no accountability. Of course they do. It's actually a non-negotiable quality of a high quality woman that she demonstrate accountability. And I don't want you to listen to this video and then assume that, oh, because it's, you know, not as strong by the evolutionary pressures, Alexander said, therefore I shouldn't expect my girlfriend to be accountable for her behavior. Absolutely not. Have high standards for yourself. Demand accountability. This is not one that you should be compromising on. But I also want to make the point that to say that accountability was driven only by the strive towards leadership is an oversimplification and not at all accurate. There were other environmental pressures, other situations, of course, that encouraged accountability that have nothing to do with the hierarchies. Every person fundamentally has to be accountable to themselves. If you continue to do dangerous things like eat junk food or take illicit substances, then you need to be accountable for the consequences that you're creating for yourself. This is a fundamental truth for every individual human, male or female. Maybe in a few social situations, you can skew away from accountability, but fundamentally, life is always going to come knocking. You can't run away from reality. And so every individual human has to be accountable for their own safety. And there's one area that I want to talk about where the evolutionary pressure to develop accountability has been way stronger for women than it has been for men. I'm talking about sexual fidelity. Every woman knows which children are hers. They're the ones that she gave birth to, but men don't have that guarantee. Paternity uncertainty is a huge fear for men. And so over countless generations, men have been encouraging accountability for women with regards to their sexual behavior. What have you been up to? Have you been spending time with other men? Who have you been with before me? Do you think that guy is cute? All of that paranoia, that controlling, 
you know, that suspicion that comes from men in their relationships is all driven by that paternity, uncertainty, evolutionary fear. That hasn't happened in a vacuum. There's been a corresponding effect on the evolution of women in that they have become a lot more concerned about their sexual reputation. They've become a lot more chaste. They're less likely to engage in casual sex, in part because they want to demonstrate that I am accountable for my sexual behavior so that they can appeal to the top quality men. Because that is absolutely one of the things that men look for. Is she trustworthy with regards to what she's telling me about her sexual history? So because of this need for accountability in this area, women developed chastity but they also developed some deceptiveness. None of this stuff is simple because the same pressure has kind of created two different strategies for women to deal with it. Like I've got men coming at me so hard with their fears. Like, have you been sleeping with other men? And yeah, part of that has forked off to, I have developed to be more accountable for my sexual behavior, but it's also gone the other direction as well. I've developed to be less accountable, more inclined to lie about it, as I talked about earlier in this video. But leaving the sexual stuff aside for a moment, you can also understand that men have looked for accountability in their female partners because they know that that's going to be a really good trait when it comes to raising children. If you've got a woman who doesn't display any degree of accountability, then a man's not going to want to choose her. What's to stop her from just running away when she feels like it on a whim and abandoning my child? So there's definitely some accountability in femininity in that area. But of course, I would argue that parenting isn't an exclusively feminine type of accountability. Men obviously need to be accountable as fathers as well. And there's been, you know, sexual selection pressures pushing men to demonstrate their accountability in order to attract women. But my larger point is to say that accountability is not one dimensional. It doesn't just relate to leadership. There are numerous different environmental and sexual selection pressures that have caused both men and women to develop accountability in various degrees and in various ways. It's those evolutionarily created differences between men and women that I find so fascinating. And I actually think that the word accountability would have a different definition based on who you asked. I think men and women have a different conception of what accountability actually is. Like I know that my audience is like 95% men and you're probably sitting there quite cocky going yeah i know what accountability is it means that if something happened i own up to that thing happening i recognize reality i don't shy away from facts things are black and white but understand that's your perspective women don't view accountability in exactly the same way maybe some of them do and maybe they can understand kind of where you're coming from. But a lot of women's complaints about men is that they're too black and white. They're too logical in their thinking. Like, okay, yes, you're accountable in that particular way, but I'm trying to encompass a much bigger, like holistic perspective of life. I'm accountable to my emotions. I'm accountable to myself. It's not just about the facts. It's actually that difference, which makes the discussion is chivalry dead so interesting because what chivalry means to men and what it means to women are vastly different and trying to negotiate and understand each other's perspective is what's caused it to really fade from society anyway like i mentioned earlier that's the topic of my latest patreon video if you enjoyed this video you want to see more from me then please head over to my patreon we've got an amazing community great videos i'd love to see you over there